Mel, I've got a fun fact for you. Oh, what is it? Did you know that one in three people are Closet Gravitas fans? Ugh. Well, I'm not a Gravitas fan. I'm not a Gravitas fan either. Hey everyone, and welcome back to episode 20 of The Match Fix. I'm Shock, the snarfer of shapes and slurper of strawberry milk. And I'm joined by the oceanic force and goaded with the sauce, Amalg. Amalg. It's week A, meaning we have two weeks left until the playoffs and the teams really have to start fighting for these last playoff spots. And I have to tell you, Peace have not been making it very easy for themselves with their game against Mammoth. Yeah, I mean, they already lost to Mammoth twice early in the split and you'd hope that they'd bring it back for the third match, but they did not. I don't have all that much to say about the drafts. I think the Mammoth draft is quite good though. It's just very strong power picks, very strong 5v5, which I think is obviously really good for OC. I think the Peace draft... It was interesting. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, yeah, I'm not really a huge fan of the Leeson and the Nar, but I want to come back to that a bit later after we talk about the game. The game, despite the actual result, it went pretty well in the early game for Peace. Um, Gun Crab had a little bit of a mishap in the laning phase. They found a good pick on the voice, but then he kind of fumbled the little Renata throw thing, but they managed to pick up that kill anyway, first blood for Violet, and they got another kill on him a little bit later as well. It's like Peace's comfort zone, right? Having the ADC Violet ahead on a hyper carry like Aphelios. Yeah, the man certainly knows how to use his auto attacks. I think Peace honestly were, like you said, in a pretty good position out of the early game, and you would sort of expect that. You know, they've got this, definitely a comp that's got more agency in the early game compared to like this center Seraphine comp. And so it was very problematic when at 11 minutes, Gun Crab gets picked and dies because it was like, if I remember, Peace actually had a really good position. They had like item advantages. And I think Nara was about to turn Mega. So they have this like really, really good setup. And it's very, very possible that if Gun Crab doesn't die here, Peace just win this fight. They drop the Herald and then they just get like 2,000 gold. Whereas instead, they die and it's just the complete opposite. The other team's getting far ahead. I think it was the 1630 fight afterwards where Peace would just kind of like very split and then Lissandra TPs in and ends up on like half HP and can't really do much and then Nara got chunked and couldn't really go in on like a low amount of HP and stuff like that. And I think every fight that Peace could have won, they just weren't either in the right position or someone got picked or someone got chunked. And so I think they maybe, and maybe even should have won three fights back to back here. And instead they kind of didn't like hard lose them, but they just didn't really like get anything from them. And I actually think the 1630 fight, two of them died. So if you're the comp that needs to snowball, you really need to win these fights. Mm, Yeah, like that third dragon fight, like you were talking about, Tien just gets chunked out and he, I think he feels like pressure to try and engage and he just jumps straight into Talia's rocks, decides he doesn't want to exist anymore and dies obviously and then Mm. becomes really hard for Peace to play. They do find a little bit of damage and Violet decides he also doesn't want to exist. He gale forces in, kills the Kindred, but he's dead as well and that's where Mammoths pick up their third dragon and being two dragons behind is like, okay, but like being three dragons behind, it's like, wow, you're, you're really pressured into contesting that fourth dragon. It's not the kind of situation where peace are the ones that are outscaling, you know? Like I think you you would not expect a comp with Senna Seraphine to have three dragons. Exactly. If anything, you'd expect it to be the other way around. Yeah. So the fact that they're in this position just makes it so easy. And I think there was a fight at 22 minutes that really showed me kind of the differences in these comps. It felt like, you know, for peace to win a fight, they've got to get some flanks like Lee and Nar have to find some like pretty high value and it's quite difficult for them. Meanwhile, you know, Mammoth, they pretty much just have to group five. They can hit whoever's in front of them. They don't have to try to find flanks or anything like that. And on top of that, they have a ton of sustain. Um, so they can kind of, you know, even if they make some mistakes, they can kind of be forgiven. And yeah, at this point, it just didn't look like Peace could really win anymore. They kind of fumbled their windows too much, I think. Yeah, like specifically on that like Dragon Soul fight, it was like Tien trying to find a pick on Pat Rise, but Pat Rise is just so fucking tanky at this point. And Tien actually loses like most of his health and he uses his Mega. So he's like half HP, mini Nah, like zero Fury, and he's just sitting in bot wave, completely separated. And from that point on, it's just like, how do PC even play this? Because like to their credit, Mammoth did this really well, but they literally just deathballed, moved together, played their range with Sin and Seraphine, chunked Violet out, he can't hit anyone. Mm, yeah, and then it's sad. just over before it even starts. It's yeah. like, and that just seems to be the recurring theme behind like all of these dragon fights, just Peace not being able to actually fight properly. Peace, 
definitely do have, I would say, the harder to execute comp, but they certainly have the tools and it's not like it's super hard to execute. Like I think while it is more difficult to find consistent value with champs like Lee and Nara, like you definitely can, right? And if yeah. they get strong, they're definitely impactful. So I don't think it's they've, they've picked some super you know, eccentric comp that is like mega hard to execute. They should be fairly comfortable executing this. I don't know if you remember, but this was super sad. The Lee like flash kicks a Shivana. A full tank Shivana. I was looking at this man like, man, what is going on? <laughs> I think maybe he thought that they could pick Shivana before the Elder Dragon. Because like if you can kill Shivana here, like admittedly it's quite yeah. good for you, but they used just everything <laughs> on everything. Shivana. And she still didn't die. And then uh, there was like a massive like AoE Seraphine ult and they just got nuked and the game was completely over. Something I want to quickly talk about is this like Lee Sin Nar thing. Because I think a lot of people look at the current meta and I remember Rust even said something that was like every time the Peace vs. Mammoth, Lee is mind controlled into picking Lee. <laughs> Not just going for the Lee Sin, going for Lee Sin's Lee Sin. And honestly, I think it has been Mammoth that they've picked it into most times where Lisa has looked the most shaky on it. In a scaling meta, it's just like generally more difficult to find um, the kind of plays and, and value that you need out of champs like this. But like something we had on Dire Wolves that was that our mid and top, so me and Chippies, would play too aggressively whenever we had a farming jungler. So Arthur, middle at the time, couldn't play any farming champs because, you know, we would just be laning and dying, right? So he always needed to play something aggressive because we would play aggressive as well. And I wonder if that's like the same sort of thing as Peace where if they play scaling and scrims, it doesn't really work out for them. Or maybe, you know, um, they're trading too much and so they can't function without an early game jungler. So... Obviously, we don't know the reason, but there could be reasons that, like from their scrims and stuff that actually like results based um, that tell them, you know, this is what they should pick, even though it's not best in the meta. And I think also, if you look at how Peace played in Split One, they played like a very heavy like mid jungle star, right? And so something like the Sandra Lee Sin, I think, really leans into that. And it might be that in scrims again, like the enemy mids play more aggressively than they do on stage. I think that's very normal. So on stage, I mean, sorry, in scrims, they might just be winning every single game with this, and then on stage. Stage, you know, people play a bit safer. They don't quite find the same value. So I think it's very easy to look at peace drafting and just be like, dude, what are these noobs doing? Just pick a scaling comp and collect your free win. But I think people really ignore the fact that it's five players and not five robots and they have their preferences, they have their strengths, they have their weaknesses. And also like interacting as a team can, can change things a lot. Like you might not be able to play your strengths if your teammates can't like play with that. Jumping ahead, Later into day two, we have PGG versus Order. And this is obviously an important match for both teams since the tension in the ladder is so tight. But yeah, PGG coming out on top. Yeah, so starting from the draft, I actually like both teams' drafts on paper, but I think PGG got way better in terms of what their players want. You know, you've got Yuri on one of these melee champs, you know, Prey to Hyper Carry, Rogue, yeah, just put them on whatever. And I think like, yeah, Balkan the fourth, that's definitely a champ that fits him. <laughs> and Winter, he's been pretty solid on basically everything he's played so far. On the other hand, Based. not really a fan of like Biopanther's Aatrox. I think he's much better at tanks. And also Kize, like he is fine on like range champions, but again, I think he is like much better on melee champions. So yeah, I, I do think that on paper, like both drafts are quite good, but I do favor PGG just in terms of what they want. They definitely got. That did first pick Silas, though. Is that a uh, me? Okay, yeah. How does actually, that make you feel? So I will segue straight into the game with that. So first pick Silas is very either alpha or very dumb, depending on you know your reason for picking it. But one thing is if you do pick one of these champs is very greedy, scales well, generally loses lane. If you pick a strong early game ganker like Jarvan, it can make the kind of life of the enemy mid laner really difficult. And you saw this at like 2.30 because Talia really wants to punish this blind pick Silas, right? Like Silas is very weak in the early game um, and Talia can definitely punish that, but it's just super difficult to play aggressive when they've got a strong level 2 ganking jungler like Jarvan. So having that kind of combination just allows Silas to scale for free because Talia can't pressure. Instead, Talia tries to pressure, gets her flash blown, and then is pretty much just not going to be effective yeah, for the first time. It's so early. hard. From yeah, on. exactly. It is just like quite difficult to play against. And I feel Kisei's pain. It's an annoying combo. I really hate when you know enemy mid picks something greedy, but then his jungler's just there to. <laughs> I can't say that on camera, but you know, <laughs> do things to make sure he's safe. <laughs> do things, yeah. And as I was saying, Talia versus Jarvan, it's kind of sad. And at 12.30, there was like, I think it was 12.30, 12.45 or something like that. There was just, I saw this and I was like, man, like, I, I'm so glad that's not me. 
Because he's just like patiently leaning under his tower and he gets like flashed on by Jarvan from bot side, flashed on by Gragas from top side and Silas just goes in as well. And I was just, <laughs> man, oh, I actually hate Jarvan. Yeah. It's actually the best champ in the game. So it's really rough playing Talia against these comps when you, like in a team fight, it's actually not so bad because you have your E and like you can stun them, you can peer your team and stuff like that. But just in these like isolated 1v1s or like when they're going for ganks and stuff like that, it's really, really difficult. Like when they've already close the gap. It's like, yeah, exactly. not really much you can do. And like, honestly, like watching that, it was so well played by PGG. I feel like it would even be like censored in some countries. It was just, <laughs> it was just dangerous to watch. Right? Yeah, it was very nice. <laughs> so most of the early game, I think was I, at around 1430 before the big fight, both teams are in touching distance of each other. I think order are up around 400 gold from what I remember. It could yeah, have been the other way much. around. But anyway, it's very, very close. Um, but this fight turns into an absolute disaster. So quickly before the fight starts, I actually wonder if it would have been better to just have Aatrox come from topside, clear out the mid wave, and then have Order go straight to bot wave and push that in. I actually think that maybe there is more gold to be had here from just denying like mid wave and bot wave. Um, but anyway, like they think they're strong, so they look to take the fight. And it was kind of sad to watch because it was like really small mistakes that turned really bad. So it was like. Goodo, I think he like went too far forward, takes a bit too much damage, and then gets trapped and doesn't get the smite heal on the dragon. Jinx gets a reset, and then they kind of just like annihilate them. And it was like that tiny mistake actually turned into a lot. It was like they got two kills, so they got the puppy kill, and they ended up getting the Talia kill. They stole the blue buff, they denied mid wave, um, and I believe they didn't blow any flashes bot, but they chunked them both out, made them base, got the bot tower, denied the bot wave. So it was like this tiny mistake. Or I guess it's not that tiny, right? But it was a relatively <laughs> a small mistake that Goodo made just makes the game so hard. They lost so much from it. And to be honest, they still weren't amazingly far behind. You know, I think it was like maybe 1.5 or 2K. Um, but like, you know, just the loss of tempo on the map does feel pretty bad. Yeah. And then there was another fight at 2035 where it felt like just small mistakes really were the difference. So I actually couldn't even see what happened here. But I think Poppy Alt might have been canceled by his own team's Nautilus Q. Oh, really? I'm, I didn't I'm not see really that. sure because I really couldn't tell. There was like so much stuff going on. So I'm sure they had no idea what was going on. <laughs> but it looked to me like he altered someone just as Nautilus cued them. And so he actually stayed on the ground. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. And also, I think Aatrox didn't really find any value. He actually did have like a pretty good flank, um, but then didn't really use it and just ended up like trying to attack. I think it was like a poppy altered Jarvan. So it was real weird because he like had access to Jinx and I think could have done a lot. And then he just like goes on the. Terracol to Jarvan didn't make a lot of sense to me. But yeah, same thing. Jinx gets resets and just kind of takes over. And honestly, after this fight, it is just really over. If you fall behind against the Terracomp, it's very, very difficult because I'll just like relentlessly dive you over and over and it becomes really hard to trade back any kills. And I was honestly really, really impressed by PGG this game. So I think, you know, in some of the other games, it's been the other team have just like made loads of big mistakes. But I don't think Order's mistakes were that big. PGG just capitalized really well. And we've been we've been kind of blasting PGG for a <laughs> yeah. while. But I really think that all five of them actually played really well. And I want to really emphasize that. Like Rogue had really good like ults, really good flash stuns, played us like 10-0 on Jinx. Silas, like again, Yuri always plays well in Silas. Balkan the fourth. He's a job in main for a reason. And Winter was like silently gapping top in fights. Like he didn't get a lot of kills, but he was way outperforming Aatrox in pretty much every fight. So that was like amazing for me because this was like the signs of the split one PGG, like all five members playing well. That team on that day could probably contest the Chiefs. Would they beat them? I'm not sure, but like if there's a team to contest them, that's probably it. Week eight left the standings in a bit of a weird spot. I feel like after week seven, we had them all kind of neatly lined up. First, second, third, fourth place, tied, whatever. Um, but this week, we've got three teams type of second place again. Uh, we'll start off with Chiefs though, first place, obviously. Still haven't dropped a game, and now they've actually locked in first seed for playoffs, I believe. So, nice job, Chiefs. Uh, second place, we've got three teams at 10-7. That's Order, that's PGG, and that's Direwolves. And there's some interesting head-to-head -head stuff going on between them. We've got Direwolves have the head-to-head -head against PGG. PGG have the head-to-head -head against Order. But Order and Direwolves are still 1-1. So mm -hmm. their matchup in the coming weeks will determine that. And I'm hoping it doesn't go to a three-way tie because that would just be really annoying. Actually, no, that, that would, would be, be okay. Exciting. That would be cool. Would no, be I, yeah, I take that I back. Hope I hope it does. <laughs> so yeah. even more interestingly, we have two teams tied for fifth place, their final playoff spot. And that's going to be Kanga and Peace. Uh, and Kanga do have the head to head. So Peace's playoffs chances looking a little bit rough, honestly. And I, honestly, I'm all for it. Kanga have really been stepping up recently. And 
props to them for having a shot at their playoff spot. Mammoth did pick up a win against Peace, but um, I think they're not officially out of playoffs, but it would definitely require some sort of miracle for them to get in. Mm. Um, and then Gravitas obviously still have not picked up a game. Maybe they will in the next two weeks. So time is running out for them to pick up that, <laughs> their first win of Split 2. I'm yeah, all eyes are going to be on them for sure. Yeah, I think you got to expect the unexpected. Definitely did not expect Peace to potentially be in a position where they're not even going to make playoffs, let alone you know, not be top three. Because we definitely thought they were going to be the strongest team. We did. Uh, but now is definitely the time that, you know, once again, nothing will go as expected. Gravitas will probably 4-0 their last four games. Peace will probably make it to first place somehow. And just like that, Bob's your dad's brother. Yeah, and then like, I don't know, top five teams will get COVID and Gravitas ends up in playoffs or something. <laughs> I don't know. That'll be pretty All was planned. Yeah, all was planned. <laughs> Welcome back to the LCO stock market. I'm a Melg and my portfolio was down 15%. This year has been pretty rough, but of course we've got to take a look at the LCO stocks once again and still a lot of movement despite nearing the end of the split. Starting off with our winner. I haven't done the drum roll in a while. It is going to be Kanga. We haven't talked about their matches, but 2 a week. Yeah. Like, they're definitely in contention for that last playoff spot. Yeah, I actually think because they have the head to head over piece. Them making playoffs is completely in their control, yeah. I think, right? Like if they just win all the rest of their matches. I can't remember what their schedule was. I think Chiefs is in there somewhere, so they definitely have a big job ahead of them. But yeah, it was kind of crazy because there were just so many good games this week and we couldn't cover them all. But can get 2 0 ing also having a sub, I believe their support was out for COVID. Yeah, Ting Ting C got COVID and uh Ben V, aka Fruitcake, subbing in, doing a pretty good job. And yeah, I mean Good way to enter the LCO to a week. Yeah, I think Kanga, they've definitely found their style. They're just like running it back over and over again. It looks yeah. really good. And I also think it's quite good in the meta. So I think at the moment, like if they make playoffs, potentially they can do some damage. Next up is our loser. Their stocks are down once again. And they have been in this category quite a few times now, I think. And it is peace. Yeah, I think, I don't know. Because they did bad in week six. No, they did that in week seven. So week eight was meant to be their good week, but they must have forgotten the schedule or something because they did not have a good week at mm. all. And yeah, as we just said, their playoff spot is now like completely up for grabs. Yeah, I think losing 0-3 to Mammoth over the split, like that's really <laughs> insane, right? Because if you just add three more wins to their score, they're, they're actually in a good spot. Yeah. So I'm not really sure how that happened, honestly. Mammoth are too good. Uh, yeah, they actually just are, I guess. I think Peace... Are the definition of lost in the source. I think <laughs> they just like don't even know what's going on anymore. Yeah. And I think it's a real shame to see a team of such good individual players like fall off like a bozo. Yeah. Because but, they're not bad players at all, right? Like yeah. they've all proven themselves to be good. Like, and it's just, it's just so bizarre seeing them perform the, like this poorly the split. Yeah, I definitely think that they, they have like a lot of issues as a team, not just individually, because a lot of the time they do actually have good individual play. You know, look at the game we were talking about earlier where they're getting like solo kills bot, like across the map, they're really ahead after the early game, but they're just, I don't think the players' skills really lie in team fighting and mm. their team skills also don't particularly like do well at setting up for fights and stuff like that. So it's like, you know, sometimes if your team is bad at setting up objectives, but you guys are really good at fighting individually, it might work out. But these are team or these are players rather that are like quite strong in the early game. And I think outside of Violet aren't really known for team fighting. And so if they don't have the skills of team to back that up, they just kind of fall flat. It's interesting to see like a team with five good players not do that well because it kind of shows that like you need more than just individual skill to be good as a team. Yeah, I think that's definitely true. But I think it, it is also worth noting that while these are five good players, they're not like five star players. You know, like I don't, I don't think you would say that outside of... Even Violet is probably not the best in this position. I think you would give it to Raze at the moment. And I don't think you would say any of the others are the best in their role at the moment. Again, maybe earlier in the year, an argument for Appy for mid. Yeah. Right, but you wouldn't say that... Like at the moment, Guncrab is clearly the best support. Or you wouldn't say Tian's the best top, or Lisa's the best jungle. So it's like, yeah, they do have good players, but they're not so good that they can just, you know, roll over everyone. And that actually does lead into our question mark for the week. And um, it's less related to, I guess, the split, but rather like the future. And it's going to be Mammoth because we have these players that, you know, they haven't 
they okay. Well, I don't want to write them out of playoffs, but they're probably not going to make playoffs. Um, but I feel like they've all shown sort of sparks and like potential, and I'm just wondering where they can land next split or next season, rather. Yeah, I think pretty much the entire Mammoth roster will be pretty happy with what they've done as players this yeah. year. Obviously, they're probably not very happy with like the results they've achieved, but I think that a lot of these players either were completely unproven or even completely unknown, or in like Pat Price's case, like, you know, we didn't even think he played league anymore, right? Yeah. So they kind of put themselves on the map, which is obviously really good for going into next year. And I think while none of them are at the level where they'll be like a centerpiece for a team yet, I think it generally is like, you know, typically players spend their first year like developing second year you know, starting to play really well. And then third year, they're kind of like the main focus of their teams. And I think the next year, you could definitely see some of these players on better rosters as kind of like, you know, not weak members, but just kind of like filling the roster up yeah. sort of thing. Um, and Hopefully they, not on members. <laughs> and in the future, I think they could definitely be like really strong players. RCL moments once again did not fail to deliver. We had some pretty sus among us moments on the broadcast. Yeah, Lil Malg managed to vent his way in to the LCO broadcast with his reply to Carbon's tweet. We have uh, Ost Carbon, Darius because he looks like me. Um, is Darius bald? Did anyway, you see let's the go response? to the third. Did you see ML's response? Is, I it. think we have it. <laughs> I think we have it. <laughs> hey, yo. What can I say, man? People love me out there. I've got one hand for one job, another hand for a second. Two days, load me up. I have to say, the man looks like he's been in this position before. Yeah, a bit of a professional dual wielder. Gonna run out of dares. Everyone's gonna laugh. Yes. It's gonna be really funny. Production's gonna love it. I get you, Rusty. For the first time on Mine. this broadcast, I get you. Yeah. Rich homie Mac made coming up with some street names for the boys back home. Big B. What, what's wrong? Big Balky. Yeah, we got Big Z. We got Big B. Lil B. Lil B. Lil, Lil B. B, Big B, Big Man got a big D MVP. Oh my God. Yeah, they came up with one for Rusty as well. Rust Man. Rust Y. Full Mammoth Rust in there. Y. Zero head to head verse. And finally, the LCO feud between Praetith and Kitty continues this week on the LCO. Feels good to do some damage once in my in my life this split. What do you mean you did so much damage in that Kaiser normal game, Praetith? Huh? <laughs> Me and Praetith played a normal game. I was on Marcy and he was on Kaiser because he's so good at the game. I thought you were win trading me in that normal <gasps> game because you felt so bad for me, but I guess you were trying, so that's, that's a surprise. Week nine, coming up next week, some pretty spicy matches, the first of which, Chiefs versus PGG. So that game that PGG showed us this week honestly gave me a lot of hope for them. A wise man never bets against the Chiefs, and I am a bit of a Chiefs fanboy, but I really think PGG have a shot this time. Yeah, I'm also going to predict Chiefs, but uh, it's going to be a really interesting look into what the playoffs might look like, because PGG are a team that can test the Chiefs really well in the first split playoffs, and it's kind of like a similar story almost, because like they've found their... They, well, they, at least they seem to have found their footing once again in the later stages of the split. So if they can put up a bit of a fight against Chiefs, I think a lot of people will be happy to see that. I think it's also a good form check coming into playoffs. Like, is the PGG that we just saw like kind of a one-off? Um, are they going to be able to maintain that coming into uh, the playoffs? Because obviously, you know, if they manage to beat Chiefs here and stop that streak, it gives them a lot of confidence and a lot of momentum coming into those like final weeks and the start of playoffs. Later on day one, we also have another juicy matchup and it is Order versus Peace. And you know who I'm predicting already, so... What are your thoughts? I do I do know who you're predicting, unfortunately. Honestly, for me, I'm not so sure. Because it's very obvious from the standings that you should just predict order here, right? But order did just recently get kind of destroyed by PGG. At the same time, Peace have been getting destroyed by Mammoth. So, <laughs> you know, maybe those aren't quite equal. Um, no, I don't know. I think both teams are the kind of teams that right now can win or lose against anyone. But... Clearly, I think Order is a favorite. Yeah, definitely, like, considering the close playoffs race we have right now, it's kind of a must-win for Peace, right? Because they've got some pretty hard matchups coming up by Gravitas. But, yeah, if they want to have a shot at retaining their spot, they really got to win this one. Day 2, Direwolves versus Order, two teams that are currently tied for second. So it's a very important match for both of them coming into the playoffs. And I think they're also 1-1 at the moment. Yes. Could be making that up. Um, but, yeah, they're, so they're very close. And I think that Direwolves do have the edge if we just look at like current form. Mm -hmm. But I also think the Order's play style is actually like pretty good into Direwolves for the most part. So hmm, what should I predict? <laughs> I'm kind of making up my prediction right now. 
I think I'll predict order for this one. Oh my god, you actually are an order fanboy now. That's <laughs> fucking disgusting, man. Yeah, I'm actually gonna have to disagree with you there, Shock. I'm gonna go with Direwolves on this one, and just okay. because, yeah, pretty much like the form thing you mentioned. Like, I feel like Direwolves overall have seemed more stable than order. Obviously, it's still like a very close race, and it's not like I can definitely see either team winning, right? It's it's not hard to imagine. And also, we have to remember that Puma's just come back from his break and going straight into an O2 week from that, like that can't be good for your mental. And I feel like Diewolves, on the other hand, they have retained their core five and they've just been constantly playing them. So ideally, they would be meshed well. Mm, yeah, I'm going to call you out on this though. I really don't think like, I don't think the zero two would be that much of a hit to mental. Like there's, it definitely would be at the time, but there's like a lot of time to reset. Yeah. Um, and I think the the meshing players thing, there's an argument for that, but I think Order have also shown like great success with Hooper, who was like integrated in like a relatively short time. So I don't think Order have that many issues like integrating. I think what will be really interesting though is kind of like the mid bot matchups in general, because I think that the mid matchup are two players that are like very similar to each other in terms of how they play. But in my opinion, Kisei is just better. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think Kisei is quite a bit better. And then for the bot lane, I think they also play. I mean, to be fair, most of the bot lanes play kind of similarly at the moment. But again, I think Order has the advantage in that bot lane. And it's really up to, I think, the Direwolves top jungle to put on a really big performance in order to win this game. Yeah, speaking of the mid lane matchup, I was think like, Draft is going to play a key part in this as well because you've kind of got Suman who is, his champion pool isn't that great. And on the other side, you've got Kisei who pretty much plays every fucking mid laner in the game. If Order are able to abuse that well, then it's going to turn out pretty well. But I'm still predicting Diwolves. <laughs> Fuck you, series. Wow, these upcoming weeks are looking like a couple of bangers. Banger. I'll we'll catch even... you next time for your weekly fix. <laughs> <laughs>